This is a standard B-scan probe, which is uh, used in most ophthalmic ultrasound machines. It's a 10 megahertz probe, which is a higher frequency than is used for other parts of the body. And the reason is we can use high frequency around the eye because the eye is small and also it's full of fluid. So sound uh, penetrates very easily, whereas the abdomen or other parts of the body, we have to use a lower frequency because the penetration uh, is less with high frequencies. So we can use this uh, around the eye for the 10 megahertz, as I mentioned. Uh, the B scan that we use, uh, almost all of them, have a little mark on the probe. So there's often a white mark. In this case, it's a little silver streak. And that is there to orient the probe position. When the machine is turned on, there's a transducer inside of this, which is going back and forth. And it's about 15 to 20 times a second. It's oscillating back and forth. And that mark indicates the direction of oscillation. And that's important because of proposition. When you're looking at different lesions, we need to analyze a lesion in different directions. Um, and that, uh, that allows us to do that with that orientation of the probe. I usually put a drop of anesthetic in the patient's eye and have the, have the eye open during the procedure just for better orientation and better sound uh, penetration. And we put uh, kind of a gel on the probe. In this case, we use ones that are uh, safe for the eye, artificial tear solutions of different kinds, uh, uh, methylcellulose, which is what I'm using now, so totally safe for the eye. So I'll demonstrate uh, a couple of things here. So one is uh, proposition. We use two major positions that we uh, uh, examine with. One is called the transverse position. And in that position, we hold the probe so that we're parallel to the limbus. So if the limbus is here, here's the cornea limbus, I'll put the probe like this, and the mark is here, the transducer is going back and forth like that. That's called a transverse position. Whenever I'm parallel to the limbus, whatever position I hold the probe in, if I'm parallel, that's called a transverse position. So here I'd be inferior, pointing towards the superior part of the globe. Here I'd be at the nasal uh, part of the globe, pointing temporally. Here I'd be superiorly, pointing inferiorly. But every position I'm holding, that mark is such that the transducer is parallel to the limbus. If I turn the probe so that the mark is now perpendicular, like in this case here, that is called a longitudinal position. And that gives us a little better uh, uh, peripheral uh, examination of the eye. So I usually use both positions as I go around. Each, each uh, sweep of the probe uh, gets about 60 degrees uh, of, the, of the globe. So if we go around in six different positions, we're going to capture the entire 360 degrees of the globe circumference. So I will do that and demonstrate how we do that. So I'm placing the probe here in Fairly around the six o'clock limbus and the mark is towards the nose so it's going back and forth. This is a parallel limbus position. So I'm in this position I am in, in a transverse pro position. And the screen shows that. So here is the, uh, the retina, the back of the eye. Here's the front of the eye. And in this technique where we're touching the eye, we lose information in the front of the eye. We can't really see the cornea, the anterior chamber of the lens because they're all kind of meshed together uh, in, the, in the initial signal. There is a way to show that with an immersion technique, which I'll demonstrate later, to actually back the probe away from the eye and show anterior structures um, and separate them out so we can see them. But in this position here, I'm looking at the superior globe. So here's around the 12 o'clock equator and I kind of gradually angle the probe like a lever. I'm going back and forth here. I'm going further and further out peripherally. So I'm getting very peripheral here towards the pars plana. As I angle the probe this way back towards the back of the eye, I'm getting more posteriorly uh, towards the posterior pole. So that is a 12 o'clock position. To look at the uh, superior temporal globe, I put the probe at around the four o'clock position. And again, the marker is such that I'm going parallel to the limbus in the transverse position. I'm examining now, this would be superior temporal globe. So I'm here in this area here, be around the 11, 10 o'clock position. And as I angle the probe more and more, I'm getting more and more peripheral. If I put the probe exactly at three o'clock, I'm getting a temporal position. So this would be the temporal part of the, of the fundus. 
So again, here's retina. This is orbit behind it. This is inside the eye in the vitreous cavity. And then uh, look down slightly for me. And this would be the inferior position. I'm putting the probe superiorly, but I'm looking at the inferior glow because the sound goes, the probe is right here, going through the vitreous, hitting the back of the eye here. So this would be an inferior position looking at the six o'clock area. And so I can do that all the way around the globe for six positions. Um, once I've done that, I can then do longitudinal positions where I put the probe so that the marker is uh, perpendicular to the limbus. And this way I'm going more peripheral. I'm able to get way out to the periphery, uh, which I can't do as well with the transverse position. So this would be the superior uh, fundus here, very peripheral towards the pars plana. And again, as I go around uh, different positions, same thing. I'm, I'm maintaining myself so that I'm perpendicular uh, with that marker, so uh, the sound beam is going back and forth this way in a perpendicular position to the limbus. Here's the temporal fundus, so I'm going across the globe here, temporal fundus, looking at the retina and examining that. Now, a major landmark that we use for proposition is the optic nerve. And to see that the best, I find the position where I put the probe to the marker is in fairly nasally, so I'm kind of pointing to where it's about five o'clock. If I do that, the nerve just usually kind of will just pop up at me uh, right there. You see a shadow as I went by there. And here's the optic. Here's the globe here, front of the globe, back of the globe, and here's the optic nerve shadow. It's kind of, it's kind of a V-shape sometimes, other uh, shapes. But when you see this darkness here, that means you're at the optic nerve. And that's a good landmark, because that orients you uh, where you are in respect to other, or other parts of the globe. So that's the basic V-scan examination. So again, using a 10 megahertz probe, I've gone around the eye in six different positions, both in a transverse position, being parallel to the limbus, and also longitudinal, being perpendicular to the limbus. And I've examined the entire globe that way. And by doing that, we pretty well see everything. We see all the way to the pars plana. What we don't see would be the ciliary body and the space behind the iris. And again, that's where the immersion technique comes in, which I'll demonstrate in a few minutes. Uh, so that's the basic position. What I'm watching for as I do this, I'm watching for any irregularity of the fundus, any little bumps, uh, elevations of it. I'm watching the vitreous cavity for anything in the vitreous, um, such as a, a posterior viscous detachment and look straight ahead again. So right here we see a few vitreous opacities right here and that would be consistent with the little floaters. Most patients have those little specks that float around. Um, the ancient Rom Romans called them musque volatantes which was uh, Latin for moving flies. People thousands of years ago thought they had little flies in their eyes floating around and they called them musque volatantes but most of us have those. We can see them if you look at a bright light or against a clear sky. You see little tiny th threads kind of floating by. That's very normal. If there's a sudden change in floater, if you suddenly see a lot more than usual, bigger floaters, more than usual, that can be an indication of a vitreous detachment, which most of us go through as we get older. But as that vitreous detaches, it can sometimes tear the retina. And that can lead to a, t a torn retina, detached retina. So we always examine for that carefully. So looking here again, we have some vitreous opacities, which I would probably just call uh, vitreous cineresis. I don't really see a posterior vitreous detachment, but I see little dots in the vitreous, which are very typical for uh, most people. Now that's the B-scan technique.